Hey YouTube, Happy New Year, and in this first video of 2023, we're going to be taking a look at our good old friends IGN, yes that's right, they've been added again, with their top 10 games of the Sega Dreamcast. So without further ado, let's jump straight in, we'll take a look at the video and probably discuss some games that we would have probably put in there ourselves. <laughs> da, da, da. Okay IGN, hit me. The Sega Dreamcast was one of the most innovative consoles ever. It also marked the end of an era. Aware that its time in the console business was almost over, Sega said to hell with it and went all in on fascinating, weird experiments, from the delightful rhythm games like Space Channel 5 to strange curiosities like Seaman. In compiling a list of the 10 best Sega Dreamcast games, we sought to create a snapshot of the Dreamcast legacy, which encompassed everything from burgeoning online play to wild peripherals. We kept the focus on North America for the most part, which meant omitting many of the excellent shoot 'em ups from Japanese video. Okay, so this is mainly North America as well, so we do have to take note of that. Game developer G Rev, but we did manage to sneak in Res, a pioneering rhythm game that was always meant to be on Dreamcast. The Dreamcast is long gone, but the games listed here live on as some of the most beloved games ever made. What a console. Here are the 10 best Sega Dreamcast games of all time. Here we go. This could be interesting. <laughs> a spin-off of The House of the Dead 2, the Typing of the Dead was initially designed to improve one's typing and practice how fast one can type. However, its idiosyncratic gameplay and humor make it so much more than that. Uh, 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 uh. This is a present from me to you. Instead of a light gun, you're using a computer keyboard and the power of proper spelling and grammar to fend off hordes of the undead. Whoa, 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 whoa. I just love how they skate over there instead of using a light gun. Back in the day when we could actually use light guns. CRT monitors, I'm sorry. Yeah, Typing of the Dead, can't take it away from it. Great game, but the original House of the Dead 2, Arcade Perfect, may we add, on the Sega Dreamcast, with the light gun, is one of the best shooters you will play. Wow. And they've gone for Typing of the Dead instead. The Dreamcast didn't have many RPGs, but the ones it did have were good. Along with Skies of Arcadia, Grandia 2 is generally considered one Grandia of the two good game, RPGs yeah. on the platform. Lauded for its excellent soundtrack and even better battle system. Strike! Purple Lightning! Take this! And this! Ha! Ha! While Grandia itself has faded, its mechanics have sprung up in a variety of RPGs over the years, from Ubisoft's Child of Light to Penny Arcade. Oh, Child of Light, fantastic. Precipice of Darkness. Grandia 2 was also one of the best looking games on the Dreamcast, filled with high quality what? magic spells, special attacks, and other Best looking games. It was a noticeable it's a brave statement. was available on the PlayStation at the time, especially during its most elaborate attack sequences. Its visual luster has faded in the years since, but it's still good fun to play, as demonstrated by the recent remaster. It remains worthy of the Dreamcast legacy. I'll stick that in there, yeah. The Dreamcast Fantasy Star oh, now then. was a rebirth for the brand. Fantasy Star Online was a hit at debut, switching from the original first-person dungeon crawling and overworld exploring model to a new 3D real-time action RPG. PSO added online play with friends, character creation, and more to the franchise, which was distinct from the previous game's narratives. Combat was enjoyable and varied depending on your character's customization. Different races and classes excelled at melee, ranged, or technique combat. The four quest areas varied in style and fostered replayability by allowing you to level up and acquire materials to feed your pet mag, which would provide special abilities such as buffs, stat boosts, and powerful photon blasts. These features increased replayability by enabling players to create new characters and experiment with alternative race and class combinations. Following its initial release, Fantasy Star featured additional missions, raised level caps, new difficulty levels, and more. Never played it on the Dreamcast. Downloaded, which was uncommon at the time. Fantasy Star Online appeared to just keep going, and for those of us who picked it up again on later systems, like the GameCube or the Xbox, it had a second life, capturing our attention and time. I think that's quite interesting what they said there. Um, great original game on the Dreamcast, but I think it's possibly where it's become since then. I've played it on the PC. I think, is it PSO? 
two out now. And it's got a uh, my huge following. Time all over again with enhancements. Sonic oh, now then. Released just three years after the first Sonic Adventure and improved on the original's formula in every way. I would have said the original in here, but the the Sonic, Sonic Adventure 2 definitely. Were all about speed and platforming. Tails and Dr. Robotnik were all about blasting their way to the finish line with their mechs, and Knuckles and Rouge were all about exploration and treasure hunting. Alternate objectives were also included in each level, adding to its replay value. The Chow Garden improved upon its return and was a fun distraction where you could raise and train Chows to complete in races and karate. A 3D version of Green Hill Zone was available as a reward for those who collected all 180 emblems by earning... I can only say I never did that. There were also Maybe something we need to know on the channel. ...head modes in which you could race on foot, fight in mechs, embark on a treasure hunt, or race in go-karts. Sonic Adventure 2 also featured some of the best music in the franchise's history. There's a reason songs like Escape from the City and Live and Learn were saved for the finale and encore in the Sonic 30th Anniversary Symphony. Produced in part by Tetsuya Mizuki, Rez. who would later be known I can only see I've never played it. Luminez and Tetris Effect, Rez wasn't just unique, it was cool. It managed to combine rave culture and rail shooters fueled by the Dreamcast's open-ended creativity. Rez's development team is still emotional about this project to this day, coming as it did in the midst of the Dreamcast's unceremonious death. It would eventually release on PlayStation 2 and is now available on a multitude of platforms, including the Meta Quest 2. But Ooh, as the Meta Quest 2, great fun by the way. Sega, well, let's check it out on that. Pioneer, Rez will always be a Dreamcast game first. An action game Jet Set Radio. Skates, spray graffiti, and evade authorities with fun, addictive gameplay and a stellar soundtrack? Jet Set Radio is something special. While the gameplay in its sequel, Jet Set Radio Future, is a bit more refined, the cell shaded, vibrant art direction. Yeah, I can remember the art style being original fantastic. A true gem that has influenced spiritual successors such as Hover and Bomb Rush Cyberfunk. Here we go. Marvel vs. Capcom Had to be in there. Dreamcast was a game changer in the world of fighting games. Not only was it a near arcade perfect port, meaning that the developer didn't have to make any sacrifices or tweaks to get it to made on the same board, of course. Arcades, but Marvel vs. Capcom 2 was simply one of the best fighting games of its time. Being able to play it at home without having to spend your allowance at the arcade was something that game changer created an entire generation of fighting game fans. Oh, now then. Still clamoring for more Power Stone. Despite the wealth of arena and party fighters that have come out since Power Stone 2, there's still nothing quite like it. Part of the appeal was that there were just so many. So much fun we've had on Power Stone 2 with the guys in the past. You could just wail on them with your character's unique list of moves and special moves. You could run off and hop in a turret or use some other sort of environmental interactable. You could pick up one of the seemingly hundreds of items, or you could hunt down the three power stones and transform into your super powerful alter ego and turn the tide of the fight definitively in your favor. Power Stone 2's multiplayer battles were just so incredibly dynamic, and the Dreamcast is still the only place to experience them. Power Stone, probably one of my favorite franchises of all time, that has never really continued. I would love them to uh, do a reboot or some kind of remake, probably one and two collection. Obviously, they brought out the one and two collection on the PSP. It's a close one for me for Power Stone 1 or Power Stone 2. I, I hold them both up there in very high regard as a fantastic Dreamcast game. Uh, Power Stone 1 may be more for the solo play. Power Stone 2, fantastic fantastic party game before the likes of smash brothers or anything like that came out great game there's a lot that makes skies of arcadia one of the skies of arcadia i've never actually era, played it the number one reason is its sense of discovery and adventure skies of arcadia is all about being an adventuring sky pirate discovering new lands recruiting new crew members to your ship and you know stopping an evil empire from destroying the world with ancient weapons Skies of Arcadia is charming, it's world fascinating, and while many probably experienced it on the GameCube as Skies of Arcadia Legends, the original right, okay. Dreamcast version will forever hold a place in the pantheon of fantastic. Could have got some better footage. Number one. Oh wow! Now we're talking. Still one of the best fighters ever made. When it came to the Dreamcast, people were still pumping quarters into machines across the world. Sorry to stop it there. 
just let's remember at the end of this video what the guy just said. Soul Calibur is one of the best fighters ever made. World to play, but somehow you got a better version at home with new features and better graphics than the original. To get such an amazing version on a home console was really special, and to this day, the Dreamcast version of Soul Calibur holds up as one of the best things about the console. If you've ever tried this tale of souls and swords, you are missing out on what a game. What a game. And not just because I like fighting games, by the way. And there you have it. Our picks for the top 10 dreams. Many reasons which we'll have discuss. We any? Did your favorites make the list? Sound off in the comments. Did your favorites make 10. the list? Check out our top 10 Wii U games of all time or the top 10 best PS5 games. And for everything else gaming, you're already in the right place. IGN. K.O. Okay. Major point there. Um, what I should remember. They say, or the guy says, Soul Calibur is one of the best fighting games ever. And yet, it didn't make it into their video of the top 10 fighting games of all time, which we also did a video on uh, a couple of months back, which is very interesting. So it's a little contradictory there. However, I do admit that I feel like they've picked the correct game, not just because I love fighting games, just because I think of what it did at the time both in a bit of there's, there's mixed views here for me it's a bit of a sad and a good thing soul caliber was a far better version than what you actually got in the arcade what came to the dreamcast the graphics was better it played better it was far superior than the arcade version point number one great thing point number two it started for me the downfall of what we would know as an arcade today because it's around the time when home console versions mainly the dreamcast made that possible with the naomi board you were actually getting arcade perfect ports of games in your home which no longer made you the need to go to the arcade to play these better games not like when you had a dreamcast a commodore uh, sorry not a dreamcast not not like when you had a mega drive or even later than that commodore 64 but all the games were so much better in the arcade the graphics everything the experience the dreamcast for me was the start of that sort of the the the, the difference of that taking over from home console to arcade and then obviously after the dreamcast then you've got the playstation you know playstation 2 sorry uh and onward to what we have these days graphics far superior to what an arcade can give you even though you don't get that experience now it's all about online gameplay things like that not so much as socializing in an arcade as such but back to the top 10 games house of the dead typing of the dead i would have definitely put house of the dead 2 instead of that uh, there are a few strange ones in there there's a couple of them i haven't actually played mvc2 made an appearance in there which is great uh, Sonic Adventure 2 I would have definitely gone for over the first one uh, it improved everything about the first made it so much better however there's no Code Veronica in there Resident Evil Code Veronica uh, which I would have definitely put in there I thought it was a Dreamcast classic and no Shenmue no Shenmue which was one of the best Dreamcast games on there uh, and also they brought Shenmue 2 out which I never actually played the second one, but that was groundbreaking in its time. So for me, I feel like there's a couple what they've probably missed out there. Some of the others you could probably see, you know, you've got your Crazy Taxis, your Sega Bass Fishings. They were all ports of arcade games, don't get me wrong. But I think the games, what they put in there, what were ports of the arcade games, probably surpassed them vastly, really. Um, I don't know if there's any others what I would put on there. You can't even really say Sega Rally 2 because the port of that wasn't actually that great, I didn't feel, on the Dreamcast. The arcade experience, sitting in the car, you can't really get rid of that. Um, but hey, Soul Calibur 1. They've actually recognised it as the one of the greatest fighting games of all time, even though they didn't put it in their top 10 fighting games of all time. But guys, let me know what you think of IGN's top 10 dreamcast games of all time and more to the point if there's any games what you would have included in there yourself let me know in the comments down below as always thanks for the support i hope you've all had a great new year peace and we'll see you in the next one